Yo, this is how American comfort food evolved. We're at Meat and Bread in the LES, a South Asian influenced eatery featuring sandwiches during the week and plated dishes for the weekend. Owner Ozzy draws from his NYC upbringing, raised by Bengali parents trying to make him American food, resulting in seamless fusion that's also halal. Here are my essentials turmeric aioli. Whether it's the chicken masala fries or the Detroit inspired chili cheese fries, the sauce is a revelation. Hot honey fried chicken sandwich. You know that salty, sweet, and spicy combo hits every time. Grilled masala chicken sandwich. It's like if jasmine rice was a brioche bun. The turmeric slaw completes the cipher. Restaurants define the cultural fabric of communities. Let me know if y'all want to see this chicken parm from the weekend menu. Bump. Yo, I'm back at Meat and Bread. Chef Ozzy puts out composed dishes on a weekend, switching it up from his usual sandwich options to serve beautiful dishes like this plate of chicken korma. But these chicken korma tostadas though, this tastes like 74th Street at Roosevelt. The pickled onions on top are a discovery Ozzy made when he dropped an onion in his homemade gem. A fortuitous accident and a chicken parm with masala sauce is the type of New York, Italian, Bengali fusion I didn't know I needed. Try for yourself. The creativity on display in meat and bread is inspiring. Let us know when y'all visit by tagging Righteous Eats on your recap. Peace. Yo, Palestinian restaurants are too few and far between. But one of the most important in New York is Tannerine. What began as a 10-table eatery has blossomed into a vital restaurant in the community. And I couldn't think of a better place to stop for a meal with my friend from NOLA, Mo Munchies. Mo's family hails from Gaza, a place he hasn't been since 05. So for him to say the food reminds him of home is a compliment I don't take lightly. Here are my essentials, McDo's pepper, traditionally done with eggplant. The kitchen began stuffing pickled poblanos and jalapenos thanks to the influence of Mexican chefs. Righteous cross-cultural connection. Masechen, one of most top Palestinian dishes of all time. This is a chicken cooked in sumac and served on flatbread with almonds. Kanefe, it's a must. Shredded filo dough is layered with sweet cheese, baked and blessed with rose syrup. Most face says it all. Yo, let me talk about this cauliflower steak, kibbe, and hummus in part two. Bunk. Yo, don't skip these gems from a tangerine. Lamb kibbe, deep fried to perfection. This is beautiful. I got no words. Cauliflower steak. This is breaded and fried, then dressed with tahina and pomegranate molasses. This was a pleasant surprise. Do not sleep on this. Righteous. Walek the werli. These grape leaves are actually served warm, stuffed with rice, lamb, and spices. Hummus. Yo, I let Mo Munchies tell you himself. This reminds me back home. Yeah. Back legitimately. Restaurants define the cultural fabric of communities. When you can't go home, a taste of home takes on a whole new meaning. Much love to my Palestinian brethren. Bum. Yo, for those who think halal food is just chicken and rice, watch me dunk this halal bidia taco and consomme. It's righteous eats. We're at Bidia LES, a taco spot where everything's halal. Owners Iggy and Iman are LES born Bengali Americans. After working for years with Raimundo, who's Mexican, in various restaurants, they joined forces to serve Bidia tacos to many who had never been able to try this delicacy. Peep the essentials Bidia tacos, where consomme to dip, get the trifecta of chicken, beef, and shrimp, or go for the land and sea option. Fries with beef bidia, a heavy duty situation that's sure to hit during late nights. Homemade flan by Iman's wife that gets the approval from Raimundo and less importantly from yours truly. Bidia LES is changing both halal and bidia games simultaneously. Let us know in the comments what other halal eateries y'all want us to hit up. Peace and blessings to those celebrating Ramadan. Bonk. To Bengalis and the Mexican, we opened up a halal burrito spot. We took this place six months prior to the pandemic. We shut down operations for four months. We didn't know what to do. We almost gave the keys back to the landlord. So we reached out to Raymundo. We knew Raymundo went to culinary school for three years. So I found a recipe from California. He got a recipe from his mom. We also had to make it halal. So people out there that never tried Mexican cuisine, their first taste was Berea Elias. I think it was meant to be. Berea Elias was meant to be here, brought by us, Raimundo, Iman, and Iggy right here. We're here to stay. Yo, my exploration of African food continues on 116th in Harlem, 
and I didn't think it would include pasta with goat. Safari is New York's only Somali restaurant. Owner Shakib Farah combines his custom spice blends to create dishes like beef and chicken suhar. Shakib's spices also find their way into chai, which I sip as I ate these essentials. Sambusa, a Somali samosa that's tender with warming spices throughout. Beef suhar. Shakib recommends red meat for your safari experience and his salty and caramelized stir fry hit the spot. Pasta and roasted goat, a remnant of Italian colonization. It's a combo I didn't expect, but I'm happy it exists. Restaurants define the cultural fabric of communities. I'm keen to try more East African cuisine. So leave recommendations in the comments. Bunk. Yo, this fermented tea leaf salad is incredible. It's righteous eats and first we feast. We're a little Myanmar in the East Village. Chef Thidar comes straight from the underground as her first eatery kicked off at a subway station at Jackson Heights. Now she's brought homestyle Burmese cooking to Manhattan with help from her daughter Yoon, who is simultaneously earning an economics degree at Baruch. Here are my essentials. Tea leaf salad. The fermented tea leaves make up the base, but crunchy dry shrimp, nuts, fish sauce, and seasonings make the cipher complete. Coconut chicken noodle soup. The base curry is thick and flavorful with soft noodles that should be consumed ASAP. Add lemon and chili if you know what's good. Burmese shrimp curry with coconut rice. Add the accompanying chili with shrimp paste for that perfect bite. Righteous. Restaurants defy the cultural fabric of communities. Do not sleep on these skewers a little me and Mardo. Bunk. Yo, let's do another day of highlighting street vendors in Queens. This time in Astoria, Jackson Heights, and Flushing. Starting with Mahmoud's Corner. This man is a legend, peep his visage on a truck, but gaze upon his interior, rotating spits of beef, chicken, and lamb are carved, white sauce that holds secrets is drizzled, and famously, bags of eggplant or fried on mass, included in every meal. Shout out to my halal brothers and sisters, here are my essentials, chicken over rice, some things are classics for a reason, falafel, these are made to order, Deep fried and hog green inside. Righteous. A beef shawarma. Look at the smile on my face. Mahmoud told me he has been in business 35 years. Since 1983. That's actually 39 years. He's been in the game so long he lost count. Much love to the team at Mahmoud's Corner. And to our translator from Street Vendor Project. Hannah. Tag someone you want to eat chicken and rice with in the comments. Bunk. Yo, Senegalese say they make the best food in West Africa. Watch till the end to see me try their national dish. It's righteous eats. We're at Pekin in Harlem's Little Senegal. Owner Amadou Bra came to the U.S. in 98. And despite speaking seven languages, he worked for $120 a week doing deliveries. Two decades later, he owns three businesses with another restaurant coming soon. Here are my essentials. Domo da, a tomato stew with lamb, carrot, and onion. That scotch bonnet for extra flavor, spicy and filling. Jebu Jen, considered the national dish of Senegal. This is a jollof rice topped with fish and veggies. The burnt rice from the bottom of the pot reminds me of Korean noodle adding a new depth of flavor. Righteous. Danger juice, that pineapple, ginger, and turmeric combo. You know what this is meant to stimulate. Restaurants define the cultural fabric of communities. Let me know what other West African dishes I need to try. Bonk. Yo, things that make sense in a Senegalese kitchen. Enough rice to feed most for a week, but will only last until 5 p.m. that day. A wide assortment of stews getting sim simmered. A wooden ball for portioning. Can't fathom how many grains are cherished. Scotch bonnets and okra, if you want to galvanize your senses. Enough halal lamb to feed a wedding. Jebu Jen and his bandmates of fish, yuca, and cabbage. The owner advocating for Jebu Jen like an agent. Wait, you have to eat that one. Yeah. You have to flavor. Yeah. And whispers of wisdom and wall off from an experienced chef. Let me know what other types of kitchen y'all want me to visit. Peace. Yo, let me introduce you to two Iraqi dishes that you need to try. And a syrup that takes three days to make, which I learned about on a trip to Patterson, Jersey. Patterson is home to many immigrant communities, and that includes Iraqis like Heba, whose family fled Baghdad in the dead of night. They immigrated to Jersey, where Heba's mother established El Mazak, the only Iraqi restaurant in the tri-state area. 
dishes are made with Iraqi ingredients brought over by family members, like this date syrup, which is made from her grandmother's palm tree, and when spread over the stick and cream called Gamar, it's essential. Enjoy with bread called Simone and tea flavored with cardamom. Heba's dream is to bring Iraqi food to New York someday, and when she does, I'll get to enjoy these dolma more frequently, aka stuffed grape leaves, onions, and peppers. Righteous. I can't describe the feeling of warmth I experienced from this one meal in New Jersey. I'll talk to you more about it in a part two. Peace and blessings. Yo, Iraqi food is a rarity in New York City. But if you can't make it to Patterson, New Jersey, you need to indulge in these Iraqi kebabs. Grilled lamb is wrapped in tandoori bread with charred tomato and onion. Blessed with sumac for the head of brightness. It's vital. This cauliflower on the side it's pickled with date vinegar straight from the motherland. But if you gave me this pickled garlic with a side of rice, you already know. And finally, koozie. This lamb shank is served over a bed of rice with raisins. I've seen variations of this dish from other Middle Eastern cultures, but the depth of flavor in this koozie made it special. Much love to Heba and the many members of her family who have a hand in this eatery. Aye, please hit that follow button for more Righteous Eats. Bunk.